Hello, happy DIYers and woodworkers. Me Anna here with Heartwood Art. And today, I'm going to show you how I built this tower shoe rack. The frame's out of two by twos, and it has through dowel joinery, which is a lot easier than you may think. Hey, if you're enjoying builds like this, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com. Okay, let's dive in. Now I made this shoe rack to fit my shoes and I wear a women's size eight. So you may need to adjust the front to back dimensions to suit your shoe size or allow for a little overhang if you like. And here are the dimensions that I used. The two by two frame uprights are 54 inches. You'll need four of these. The two by two frame rails are 11 inches. You'll need 14 of these. The one by four shelf boards are 12 inches long and you'll need 21 of these. Now this will give you a total shelf width of 12 inches and an interior width of nine inches for the shoes. For the spacing between shelves, most are six inches high, but I wanted a 12 inch high shelf on the bottom for my duck boots. And the one by four boards are a half inch thick. So the distance from the top of the bottom rail to the bottom of the next rail is 12 and one half inches. Now for all other shelves, the distance from the top of the lower rail to the bottom of the next rail up is six and one half inches. And that turned out to make the top shelving boards even with the top of the frame rails too. Now I chose to sand my two by twos before I even cut and this made the whole project a lot easier, especially doing the finish. So let's make those cuts. I used a stop block on my miter saw to ensure that all my cuts were even for the four frame pieces and then for all the rails plus all of the shelving boards. And you can visit the site to see how I built this miter saw station. Okay, now it's time to build the frame. Lay out two of the long two by twos for your frame uprights. Use a two by four or other block to ensure that both uprights are even on the bottom. Place your two by two rails inside. Snug fit four long clamps to hold the frame pieces together while you check square. Then tighten the long clamps to hold the frame pieces together tightly. I alternated my clamp handles as I think that produces a more even hold across the whole piece. Okay, let's glue the frame rails. I used a popsicle stick to spread the tight bond three glue. Loosen one of the clamps. Remove the rail piece. Spread glue on each end. Then place the rail piece back in its spot. Continue down the frame by loosening and tightening the appropriate clamps as you go until all rails have been glued. Now I will let this cure for at least four hours, if not overnight. Now it's time to drill the dowel holes. The glue should be able to hold your frame together without the clamps once it's fully cured. But you can leave them attached if you like, as long as they don't get in the way of your drilling for your dowel holes. Now to ensure my holes were centered, I made my own dowel jig, as the other ones I had just didn't fit on 2 by 2s as well as I liked. And here is how easy it is to attach this jig to line it up with the rail and drill straight holes into it. And you can visit the site to see how to make your own 2x2 two two dowel jig. Or use any method you like for drilling your dowel hole straight. Now I'm using a brad point bit that came with my dowel jig kit. It's made specifically to go deep into the wood for dowels and clear itself. You can use a regular spiral cut or twisty bit, but you may need to go in and out more to remove those shavings. Now, as you can see, I used the jig to drill straight into the frame piece. Then I removed the jig and used that hole as my guide to drill into the rail. Now, this method may widen the frame dowel hole a wee bit, but certainly not enough to matter. And my bit is exactly long enough to go deep enough into the rail to make a hole that is two inches long in total. So I didn't need to put a stop collar or piece of tape on my drill bit to know how deep to go. But you'll want to check your bit's length. And it's okay if you go a little deeper in the rail as you'll be hammering the dowel flush anyway. 
I really like these fluted dowels. They hold more glue and spread out as they go into the hole, giving it a snug fit. And it's super easy to get the glue spread all around them with a popsicle stick. Plus, they have tapered ends for easy insertion. Now, I found some that did not have both ends tapered, so check that before you start your insertion, as it will be easier if you put in the tapered end first. Now, be sure to wipe off any glue squeeze out and wipe the glue off your mallet, too. And then repeat this process until you have all dowels inserted into one side of your frame. Then if you like, you can just flip the frame over and do the other side. Okay, let's build that second frame. It's super important that you have the rails on both frames lined up and even. And this is how I did it. I built my second frame right beside the first one. And I used a 2x4 to ensure my ends were even. And then I clamped them together. And I used a carpenter square to line up the rails. Now, the reason I didn't build the second frame on top of the first one was that I was concerned that any glue runoff would stick the two frames together. So, build it however you think best, but I didn't want to take a chance on that. And then it's time to sand, sand, sand. Once you have all of your dowels in and the glue is fully cured, you'll want to give the frames a light sanding to remove any remaining glue residue. And now it's time to add the finish to the frames. I chose to try a nice gel stain on this piece. It's super thick and won't run like a water-based stain, and it goes on easy with the foam brush. Plus, it's super forgiving for how much you put on and wipe off compared to water-based stains, too. Plus, a gel stain has a natural sheen to it. There's just no way for them to make it in a matte finish. It will be at least a satin sheen finish. Now, if you do use a gel or other oil-based stain, be sure to take proper precautions with your brush and rag disposal as they can self-ignite if not left out to dry flat first. And I really like these little triangle standoffs for doing stain jobs too. Okay, now it's time to prepare the frames to add the shelf boards. Now I tore down a bunch of pallets and this was a perfect piece to use all of that spare wood on for a real rustic look. Now because the pieces were not all the same width, on some shelves there's no spacing between them and on others there are. And again, that adds to the rustic charm of the piece, I think. So this is how I did it. I clamped down one of the frames on its side to the edge of my workbench. This is specifically why I built this workbench to have a lip edge on all sides. And you can go to the site to see how to build this workbench too if you want one. Then I put a 2x4 at the end to help me keep both frame bottoms even. I cut a couple of scrap wood pieces that were the interior width between the frame pieces. Now note that's 3 inches shorter than the width of the shelf boards that will go to the outside edges of the rail. And then I clamped the two frames together and check square. I used my carpenter square to ensure that the rails of both sides were square. And then I started at the bottom of the tower. I laid the first shelf board on the bottom and used clamps to hold it in place. And I love this Ryobi Brad Nailer. I used one inch brad nails. Now this nailer will be at a slight angle, but I had no trouble getting the nails to be flush with the top of the board. And once I had the bottom board, then I clamped the top board into place. And once that was nailed in, then I clamped the middle board so that I could evenly space it between the other two boards. Now once you get about halfway up the frame with the shelving boards, the whole piece should be stable enough to stand on its own. That made it a lot easier for me to finish adding the rest of the shelving boards. And there you have it. Now you have a wonderful tower rack to store your shoes, and it looks good doing it too. And the dark frame with the light shelf boards is a great look as well. Well, I sure hope you've enjoyed this tower shoe rack build, and be sure to come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com for more of them, and I'll see you in the shop.